So my name is Mike Rach, uh, and uh, I'll introduce myself in a little bit, but we're here to talk about OneQA, what it does, uh, and give you guys a, a sense for uh, what the workflow automation is in general. Um, so I'm, I'll introduce myself real quick. Um, I am a senior product manager here at Fluke Biomedical. Uh, I have the privilege to manage our OneQA workflow automation software. But prior to this and over the last five years, I've managed uh, various different product lines throughout Fluke Biomedical, uh, from our patient simulators to our gas flow analyzers, uh, to our defibrillator analyzers, and, and at one point, the entire business. Um, so a lot of product experience here that uh, I'm looking forward to sharing with all of you. And I'm also joined uh, by Justin Ross. And Justin, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit? Hello, I am Justin Ross. I am one of our channel partners, as well as I work with the Fluke marketing team to uh, build content and help launch out our products. So we're happy to bring to you today one of our new products and our big focus right now, OneQA workflow automation software. So I wanna go over what we're gonna cover today. Um, and one thing uh, is I want to briefly touch on what a biomed is. Uh, and what I mean here is what it means to you. Uh, and we'll get into that uh, in a little bit. Um, but I also want to touch on uh, why you should care about workflow automation and also what you should consider when you're looking at workflow automation uh, and ultimately tie it back to what the value of workflow automation is to you. Um, this is going to be a talk through of, of workflow, workflow automation in general. Um, but because we're Fluke Biomedical, we'll be able to specifically tie that back to uh, our OneQA workflow automation software um, to give you a full picture of how one solution on the market looks and acts. Um, so with that, I think we'll jump right in. And, and one thing we wanted to do today was have this be more of an interactive conversation. Um, so the first thing I'd ask you to do is to go find uh, the chat section uh, right here and go to webinar. Um, and put in the answer to a couple questions here as we kick off. And the first one is, why did you become a biomed? Um, curious to see what your stories are here um, and just see where you take the question. Um, this is meant, meant as more of an icebreaker, so feel free to put um, whatever it is you, you drove you to become a biomed uh, in the chat, and uh, Justin and I will, will chat through it. I, I wish I had a much better story, but literally I had got out of the military and I even know what a biomed was. It never occurred to me that somebody actually had to fix medical equipment. So a buddy of mine had a company who was selling used medical equipment and one thing led, fell into one thing led to another. I started fixing hospital beds and surgical tables and one thing led to another and it built up over time. So I actually just kind of fell into the field, but just simply because I liked repairing things. And once I got into the field, I realized just how impactful it was. And just how much of a, how much it can really help the patient care at a hospital or facility. No, it's interesting that there's there's a lot of different um, kind of ways of life and, and paths that ultimately drive someone into uh, a field. I think a lot of people come into biomed from the military. Uh, a lot of people choose this as a career after the military. Um, and I see that quite a bit when I go out and, and talk with customers. So a couple comments here um, where someone's looking for a different career path that they could create from scratch at the company they were working for. So sounds like Biomed's a space where you can chart your own path, right? And make your own adventure. Is that similar to what you were uh, doing, Justin? Very much so. You know, once I got into the field, you know, repairing medical equipment was neat. But then I realized that you can start to specialize. And I, I chose to work on sterilizers and anesthesia machines. And then I learned about radiology and imaging. And then my path started taking me that way. So, you know, and that story leads a long way down the road to about five or six years ago where I kind of fell into working with Fluke. And now it's a whole nother horizon. I never would have thought way back in 2002 when I enrolled in Penn State, that this is where I was gonna end up working, you know, 20 years later. Yeah, we have another path where someone was doing rental deliveries and now is in biomed management. Um, or there's a story about uh, getting laid off and then moving into biomed. Um, another story about, about coming into it from the service, 
22 years ago, right? So it's been quite some time. Um, and then one thing that's interesting about that comment actually is um, the, the call out that they enjoyed repairing things, right? I think that's a very common theme within the biomed community as well. All right. All right, so we have, I love both clinical and engineering fields, good at electronics and biology. I mean, that's another thing. Uh, biomed is definitely the merging of a couple different fields, right? Oh, especially these days. Now it's it's really hard to show the line between biomed and IT. The two are so interjoined. You know, we're networking things and data security and patient information. All that it takes the entire hospital team to work together. And that's that's another great thing I like about the field now is working with the team and you know, knowing that you can bring something to the table and help accomplish the mission. Yeah, we have some some familial motivation here, right? My grandfather had lung cancer, so I specialize on respiratory research. Another call out to repair and fix devices. And uh, let's see. I want to save lives here in Nigeria. So thank you for joining from Nigeria. Um, yeah, I really want to create impact on the lives of this, of society and becoming a lifesaver and bringing your engineering principles into health. Yeah, there's definitely an aspirational aspect to to this field as well because uh, the I always say the output of a biomed is is patient safety at the end of the day. All right, do you want to move on to the second question? These are all great answers. Thanks for participating. I really appreciate appreciate that. So a couple of you guys highlighted why you joined. Is that also the best part of your job? Or what is the best part of your job? Well, the typing, you know, one of my favorite parts about the job was always getting a piece of equipment. You know, you always like being a hero. It was always cool being in the biomed shop or at a facility working and something went wrong while you're there. And they're like, hey. Uh, yeah, I know you're working on a sterilizer, but we're about to start a case and the overlight light went down or something crazy like that. What can you do? And it's always awesome being able to be the person that came up with a solution to get it back up and running. Or, you know, it's something as simplistic as, as alarm systems not triggering correctly and being able to sit down and talk and interact with the, with the nursing staff to figure out where the glitch is at and how to fix it and how to present it. Those were always the, or some of my favorite parts. And I was always like to be in that guy who knew an answer. If I didn't have the answer, knowing or having the resources about where to go find that answer to help, again, help improve that patient uh, care. Yeah, I think someone else feels the same way you do, Justin. Solving puzzles, right? That sounds a lot like what, what you're doing. Um, some other call outs here are, are job security, work-life balance, being a subject matter expert. I think that definitely resonates. Um, the people, the best part of the job is the people I work with. I mean, who doesn't like working with good people? Um, you're spending a lot of your life there, so you might as well enjoy it. Uh, we have learning and developing testing procedures for new instrumentation and being able to take uh, something that's broken and make it work again. Uh, the best part of my job is when you finally find the issue to repair a piece of equipment that you've had trouble with. I mean, I, I love the problems that stick around for a while and you have no idea how to do it and you have to get creative. You got to push yourself. Um, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, in space, like, that's in every space. <laughs> it's two o'clock in the morning, you lay in the bed and you sit up and go, oh, right. I know what I got to do. I've done a few of those. <laughs> the, the best ideas come in the shower, I'm convinced. <laughs> um, no, these are great. Yeah, I think that... The, it sounds like there's an overwhelming need to solve the problem, right? Be the one that, that solves the problem too. I think that's uh, a really great part of the job. Um, and we have one that came in providing safety and care for patients. I mean, that's, that's the end game here. Um, and yeah, no, really appreciate these answers as well. I think there are lots of great parts of, of biomed. Um, but Justin, why don't we hop over to the next question? Am I allowed to answer this one now? I got my you know answer. Why don't, you, why don't you kick it off? What is the worst part of your job? Paperwork. Man. <laughs> you know, I was so excited to come into the paperless age because I, 
typewriters and computers were built for fingers like mine. I mean, I should have been a brain surgeon by my penmanship. So the worst thing for me was always documenting everything that we had to do. You know, I remember when it used to be like I'd go out and work for a day or two and I had to spend a day catching up with the paperwork. But now it seems like I spend two to three times as much time doing the paperless paperwork as I did doing my job. It's just so much sometimes of having to document everything and bring everything back. And, you know, I, I started the field back in the day where I used to take a tablet and a pencil and go out to the floor and have to remember everything and write it down. So, yeah, th that was always my least favorite part was the paperwork. Well, Justin, you're not alone. We got a couple here. The worst part is definitely the paperwork and accounting every last second of your time. Uh, and someone else chimed in with just documentation. So uh, there are other people that definitely feel the way you do. Um, they all get high fives. <laughs> uh, yeah, some other, someone else called out people, right? People can both be the best part of a job and the worst part of a job. Um, that's, that's true. Uh, bureaucracy interjecting with bad ideas um, and then yeah someone called out the paperwork paperless work so uh, <laughs> o overall I think there's uh, there's a lot of uh, motivation to uh, get rid of the, the the bureaucracy the documentation the paperwork so uh, oh another another call out here keeping up with PMs with all the other job demands um, very true statement um, I think one thing that, that I hear time and time again is, you know, there are more and more medical devices to uh, manage in terms of maintenance. Um, and, you know, the number of biomeds isn't necessarily changing. So there's more work to do uh, every, mm -hmm. every year. Um, so you gotta, you gotta keep up with that uh, on-time delivery of your preventive maintenance procedures. Um, it really inhibits their time to take things apart and drink coffee. Absolutely. Uh, and then the interruptions, right? It's not just the preventive maintenance. It's also, uh, you know, the, the nurse calls, something that you have to reply to or respond to that you weren't necessarily planning on. Um, th those are kind of frustrating. Uh, and then we have another person that chimed in with, uh, when I repair a machine and it doesn't work. Nobody likes it when things don't work. Uh, you want it to work the first time. Um, and Is that yeah, right up there with it? It doesn't work until the technician gets there and it works perfectly fine while you're standing in front of it until you go home. Yep. And then it breaks again. Yeah. No, it makes yep. complete sense. Okay. So these, these are great. Um, really appreciate all the engagement here and uh, the answers. Um, but I think with that, we'll maybe we'll move on to the, the next step in the deck here, uh, which is workflow automation, right? That's what you guys are here to come and learn about. So we want to share a few things uh, with you. Um, and really what we've, what we've heard uh, is, you know, things aren't all rosy, right? You guys are really busy. You guys face interruptions, issues, paperwork, all these things that you don't want to do. And this keeps you from what you do want to do, which is what we heard in the early questions, solve problems, make patients safer, get all your work done. Justin, to your point, grab a cup of coffee. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to spend the next few minutes talking about what workflow automation is, uh, what you need to consider, how all of that comes together, uh, and ultimately how it can benefit you and your shop uh, and help your team get back to doing the things that they do want to do. So on this uh, slide, what you can see is what workflow automation entails, right? Uh, what does a biomed need to consider? Uh, so one thing is your CMS system. Uh, well, question, some questions you could ask are, does it have an integration with your CMS? You know, I'm referring to the workflow automation software itself. Can an integration be built? Um, how easy is the transfer of data or the execution of a procedure? On the hardware side, does the automation software support the hardware in your shop? Can it support all the brands and models that you own? Does it automate the button pushing and the setting changing for you? How much does it leave you to do? On the procedure side, you know, are you stuck with canned procedures or can you modify those procedures? Uh, is there something there to get you started from a procedure perspective, like a procedure library? 
Can you add the things that your specific biomed shop does? Pictures, tips, tricks. Um, does it allow for knowledge transfer between your senior and your junior biomeds in terms of procedures? Um, on results, do you need a report? Uh, does, uh, do you need a customized report, right? That you might be handing over to a customer or a client that you might wanna have your brand on. Does your workflow automation software save that report? If so, where? Does it link that report back to your CMS? If so, how? Is it email? Is it automatic? Um, so a couple questions there. Um, return on investment, right? Ultimately, you wanna know if this will save you time, money, frustration, rework, you name it. There are lots that you're hoping this gives you. Does it provide that? Um, does it provide you peace of mind? That could be your metric. Um, does it standardize your processes? Does it reduce risk, increase compliance, increase patient safety? Um, those are some questions, um, but there's also ease of operation and installation. You're gonna ask, how quickly can you get started, right? Will someone guide you through the entire onboarding process? There are a lot of questions to ask, uh, but workflow automation addresses each one of these questions I asked in a bunch of different ways. Um, so in order to explain that, Justin has a creative way to walk us through this. So I'm going to toss it over to him uh, to walk us through just how it does that. So Justin, over to you. Okay, so we're gonna start, I'm gonna delve into how OneQA does workflow automation. So the very first thing is let's talk about automation. The Marion Webster Dictionary defines automation as the technique of making an apparatus, a process or a system operate automatically. Many companies offer some form of automation. It's usually between a CMS database and a piece of medical device or a piece of medical test equipment. Um, sometimes this can be a one-way street where it's just pulling data from the medical device or from your analyzer to the CMS system. Some way it's, sometimes it's a two-way where it's pushing things back and forth. But we're not really talking about just automation. Today we're talking about workflow automation. So that harkens the question, well, what exactly is workflow automation versus aut just automation? So the first thing is let's consider a standard Fluke Biomedical Analyzer. In this case, we're using our VT series, and in this picture, the VT900A gas flow analyzer. Well, the truth about the VT900A gas flow analyzer, it's not one device. It's actually approximately 13 single-use devices all inside of this box right down to the ability to view 16 breathing parameters at one time. But it's not just the VT900A, it's also our impulse series, defib analyzers. And in the case of the, of the impulse 7000, it's actually three analyzers in this box and all of its tests. But it's more than that because it's also our electrical safety analyzers and all of the tests that come with it. Not to mention, not just the tests, but the different standards. So if you are working in your hospital and you're, you know, you're in-house hospital biomed and you're following your PM procedures, you're following NFPA 99, and it has the load for that. And with our ESAs, maybe you're now gonna do a factory upgrade and you notice it calls out the 62353 standard. Do you have the appropriate loads for that? This is all gonna pull all these things into it for us as well as our most recent launch, the Fluke Biomedical ProSumate Multi-Parameter Simulator. Right now, we're able to simulate five, five different parameters simultaneous. Your NIBP, your SpO2, ECG, respirations, and temperatures. So now you have a unified approach to looking at a patient on the screen. Everything's synchronized, as well as the built-in pressure manometer, NIBP testing, pressure sources, leak tests, all that, all those things are at your fingertips. But it's more, because one QA is so powerful that we can actually step outside of the biomed field and move into the imaging field and drive our RaySafe X2 system along with all the tests with the RF system right now. And please hear me that this is continuing to be built out and soon you will see more and more devices added to the screen. But Anything that's interoperable, you might want to start collecting some data, like the model, serial number, and calibration record of the devices connected. One QA can gather all that information. So say in six months you have an audit 
and they want to know every device that your X2 was used on. Simple enough, jump in one QA, pull it up, it'll show you each and every device that X2 is used on. Or maybe you had a failure where your meter got knocked out of calibration. Well, now you need to go back for three or four months and see, make sure all those procedures were, were done correctly and that they had the right results. Now you can go back in and pull all that and find each and every one that was tied to. If you get into the OEM field, we record this a lot on our, on our work orders. This is gonna do it for you automatically. But it's more than just this thing about the interoperable devices. How about the non-interoperable devices? How about the old legacy devices? Or maybe you have a BC group analyzer. Not a big deal. We can simply build a test procedure that will give you a yes, no answer or have a data input entry. Maybe it's a numerical entry and you can put a tolerance in it. So if the answer has to be five and you have a tolerance of 0.5, you type in 5.3. If it's passing in that tolerance, it moves it on. You still get so much of this, even with those non-interoperable devices. But it's also things as simplistic as a ruler. You can use a ruler and still get the benefits of one QA. So this is all about the devices, the interoperable ones, non-interoperable ones. But there's more to workflow automation than just this. Because you also need a procedure. So where do you get a standardized procedure? Well, a lot of times this data is going to come from an OEM service manual. Now you'll have a procedure, a diagram, some pictures, some data and passwords. All these things can easily be cut and pasted right into one QA and you can build procedures right out of the OEM manual, right down to taking the graphics out so you can follow exactly through all those tips and tricks that they're giving you. But it's not just those things because we all know after we've worked on something two or three times, we find our own things we want to record. Maybe you want to take a picture that you have to take out these four screws to get to the filter, or here's the access code, or, oh, man, you need the, this adapter and connect it this way. All those things we, we, we fret over. You know, I used to get so nervous every time I had to go to transvenous pacemakers. I had like six of them. I only serviced them once a year, and I would spend the first two and a half hours trying to remember how I did it last year. You know how nice it is if I just had a picture to look at and go, oh yeah, I hooked it up just like that. And here's my steps and click, click, click. Oh, I'm done. Or this one, we've all gone to OEM schools. You know, sometimes it's up to $10,000 or more for a week. Hey, let's face it, we're a hot commodity right now. There's five biomed jobs for every four technicians. You get a trained technician, somebody wants to take them. But you can bring that knowledge base into one QA so that the other guys or your other technicians can follow right along. So we talked about these procedures and what's been the procedures, but we're here and a lot of places, even in the United States can follow alternative procedures. So you can take that OEM procedure and maybe you need that for the incoming inspection, right? So you can have an incoming inspection procedure and then you can extrapolate the things you need out of it to form an alternative maintenance procedure. And then maybe if you find a device broken, you need a repair procedure. One QA has all of these capabilities. We can build multiple procedures by device and easily lock them out. So you build them, you can put them in the way that you need them and lock them down so they can't be changed. And you know that everything is being done the same way every time. This is amazing, especially in the larger networks, larger facilities where there might be multiple versions of PM procedures sitting around. I had a friend tell me the story the other day. There was a change in the DFA manual. Half the team was doing it one way, another half the team was doing it another way because somebody found a procedure laying underneath the desk in an old binder. So there's two different versions in the same shop. Here, if you update it one time, it automatically changes it to the entire network. But there's more to workflow automation than just procedures. We also have an optional asset inventory. So you can collect the make model serial number, very similar to what the CMMS system is doing, but in here you can do things like embed pictures. So you're looking for the x-ray machine that looks like a giraffe, not the one that looks like a fire truck. And you can take a picture of that and insert it. Or maybe you could take a picture of the Zoll R series defibrillator so the new guy goes out and he's grabbing that one, not the Zoll X series. You can also do things like add notes in there, like the code for the door where it's at is 1-2-3-4, Go in, third ceiling tile to the left of the IV pumps or where you're gonna find it because I don't know why people hide things in the ceiling. 
but as a biomed, we all know it happens. All those notes can be collected by that specific make model serial. You can even record like the software versions in there. Maybe you want to put the special tools you're going to need or make sure you let the OR staff know before you show up so they can have it freed up. All that goes into this workflow automation. So all these things, when we're done with the procedure then, we need to generate some reports. So this can be a function of the CMMS system or this can be a standalone. The nice thing about this is to say, maybe you get a call in, there's a new piece of equipment coming into the OR, you got to go and you test it real quick and they want to print out for their records. Easy, do it right through one QA, print it out. Or maybe you're using an Excel spreadsheet for your CMMS system, no problem at all. Complete your work order, print a PDF, attach it. You need to email it to somebody, PDF it. You want a concise report, you want a detailed report, Whatever those reports you're looking for, it's really not a big deal. One QA can build those reports, put your header on it, and get the pertinent information you need to your customers, and maybe hide those things like those pictures. They don't need to see all that, so let's just leave those on the background. One QA also has an open API. So what does that mean? We're talking about can One QA communicate with your CMS platform? The beautiful thing about the open API is we use a common JSON language. So there's really we can really work with any of the CMS. Uh, providers out there and build this interface. And the beautiful thing about it is, is we can really build the interface how you want it to happen. Maybe you want to drive the work order from uh, your CMMS. Maybe you want to pull the work order out so you can have all the pictures you want to drive it to one QA. All those things are possible with an open API. Another thing about one QA is that everything we do is backed up to the cloud. One QA is a cloud-based program. So anything that it captures, anything that you're doing is also gonna be backed up to that cloud. Anytime that you attend any biomed conference, HTMI conference, clinical engineering conference, what's being talked about? Data security. We talk about data security all day, every day. Here's the beautiful thing. If your CMS system goes down, you have a backup. If your data gets breached, you have a backup. Everything that you're doing can be captured in a separate location so that now if one goes down, you always have this one QA as a backup. You can easily retrieve it. Whew, there's sure a lot of things here. Let's just take a break. Red light. Hmm, why do we have a stoplight? As children, we all played red light, green light. One QA is built much the same way. Anytime you complete a step of your procedure and it passes, you get a green light. Green is go, move on to the next step. If you have a failure, you have an issue, something's out of tolerance, you get a big red circle with a white X in it. Stop, failure, issue. You can either then annotate the issue and open up a repair work order, or maybe you wanna go ahead and facilitate the repair right now and retest that parameter, in which case you get to green light and you move on. So green is go, red is stop. So that leaves the old yellow light, but well, actually we just used white. White means not complete. We talked about interruptions. There was nothing more frustrating for me. I wasn't stationed in one hospital. I used to travel around the United States servicing medical equipment. Nothing was worse than driving six and a half hours to a facility, doing a PM, and you're a moving target. Everybody has a question for the biomed when you're out on the floor, right? You get interrupted. You didn't realize that you missed a step. You went ahead and tore down everything, closed up your work order, packed up your toolbox, drove six and a half hours back home. You synchronized all your data. You went, <laughs> oh, step 14. I definitely didn't do step 14. Now I have to go explain to my boss that I have to take another day and drive the whole way back six and a half hours, explain to the medical staff, you know what, maybe it's not six and a half hours, but I haven't found a biomed shop that's right beside a NOAR. We're usually about two and a half miles away down in the basement beside the morgue. That's a long way to walk to figure out that you missed a step. This is a beautiful thing about 1QA, red light, green light. If you have all the green lights at the bottom of the procedure, you get a green light. If there's one red X, you get a stop. So at the end of the day, you can go through all your procedures. Anything that has a green light, don't need to worry about. You only need to focus on those red Xs that have an issue or the clear ones that weren't completed. So taking all this together, you realize that there's a lot that goes into workflow automation versus just that single line between a CMS platform and a single device. So when you put all this together in a nice, neat package, this is what we are calling Fluke by Medical's 1QA. 
So does that help explain a little bit about 1QA, Michael? I think that's a very good visual and walkthrough that I think everyone can understand. I think it's it's good to see in terms of all those things that I had pointed out to consider, you know, what uh, what what does that look like? Like, what could that feel like? And I guess one thing, one question that I might have is, you know, if somebody wanted to know more, right? If they wanted to see what this could look like, um, how would that how would that appear? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so the easiest way to do it is find your channel partner or even call into Fluid Customer Service and they'll put you in contact with a 1QA team. And we can start to work through some of these things with you. In fact, we're going to start doing a white glove treatment. So if you call in and we can get you an appointment, we'll come in and we'll help you set up a, a free demo. We'll help you get it built up, get you some procedures that you can use and so you can start to feel the impactfulness of 1QA right off the bat with minimal effort. And do we have something where we could show um, what a CMS integration might look like? We do, we do. Hello, in this video, we're going to show the 1QA CMMS integration with True Asset. Let's start by opening up the True Asset Equipment Management System software. And then we're going to select the work order tab and select the desired work order from the list. Once the work order is open, we will confirm that the device under test or DUT's information is correct and then select perform procedure. Once the procedure is open, connect any required test equipment to your PC and then select the Fluke 1QA tab. 1QA will open and the DUT's information is already populated. You see that any interoperable Fluke test equipment's model, serial number, firmware version and calibration date are already populated in the 1QA procedure. Go ahead and press run procedure and complete the steps. Once the 1QA procedure is complete, select done. The procedure's results will populate in the 1QA cloud as a backup for your data. The data will also populate into the true asset work order procedure. Any additional required fields such as time and or material can then be added to the work order and the work order closed in true asset. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next video. And we have one more video for you. I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your DFib testing experience utilizing Flute by Medical 1QA workflow automation software. 1QA comes with over 63 pre-built work order procedures, but we recommend that you please review those procedures before you adopt them. Make sure it meets all your hospital's policies and procedures, as well as meets the most recent version of the OEM equipment's uh, service manual. Let's get cracked into work order and we'll show you how to get the most out of your testing experience with reliability and repeatability, as well as easy, accurate ways to record your data. Please note what we're about to show you is not a standard preventive maintenance procedure. This is something we made up for demonstration purposes only. Getting into the work order here, we have two different preventive maintenance procedures we can select. We will select this one for right now. And here's all the information we need to know as well as the work order ID. Moving on, we're going to be doing a preventive maintenance style work order and the device we're going to be testing, as well as all the information from the analyzers that are connected to the 1QA software at this point. In these sections, you can start to customize special notes, maybe everything that you're going to do for your preventive maintenance procedure or any special equipment that you need to bring along with you, as well as access codes. All that can be recorded right here into 1QA. Moving down to a physical inspection of the unit, this is actually one of the steps. So we'd simply read the instructions and it's like either pass for this one and maybe for this one we'll read this instruction and pass for here and then in this case what if it fails so here you have a green light go green light go here red stop there's an issue so now we can either go back and correct the issue and make this a pass or we can leave it as fail and complete the work under conditions moving on to the next step here's what we're going to need to do the electrical safety test Instead of having to read a diagram though, we can actually insert a picture of how to do the connections. So here it is, my one to 10 adapter block, my hands-free adapter. So I've connected my entire defibrillator at one time to the safety analyzer. 
Here's the test we're going to perform, as well as any special instructions. And now here's the diagram that corresponds to the picture we just showed you, so we can double check our work. And now getting into the test, I simply push play, follow the instructions, turn my defibrillator on, hit continue. All right, now I'd like to me power my defibrillator off, hit continue. And you'll notice that my electrical safety results have automatically been recorded. I didn't have to remember how to set up or operate my safety analyzer. I didn't even have to bring in any of that. It did it for me automatically. Everything was already done for me there. So moving on to the next tests, here are some operational tests. And what we did here is I actually cut and pasted right out of the service manual into one QA. So I have the exact diagrams and button pushes to get to the keypad test that would look like this. Simply follow the instructions and I would hit pass when I'm done with it. Or if there's an issue, fail obviously. Moving on to a shock test, we can show you how to use the defibrillator, the uh, Impulse 7000. Here's a picture of how to connect it. In the case of the Zola X series manual, we need to use the additional 7010 load box and use different uh, loads to discharge our defib at. So we'll follow the instructions. Right there, it shows at 25 ohms. Everything else is connected correct. Oh, here we go. Move my cables down. There we go. So that's here. These are here. And these are here. Good to go. Now we we'll simply turn on our defibrillator. Follow the instructions. Go to here. We're at 25 ohms. Select 50 joules on my defibrillator. Charge, discharge, there's my results, 50 ohms, charge, discharge, and one last time, 175 ohms, charge, discharge, go ahead and shut my defib off, and select done. It's that easy. It makes sure that you complete all your steps, that all your data is accurate, and that nothing was missed. This way, it just makes the whole job and the whole experience of testing defibrillators so much easier. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next video. So those are some examples, just two of the examples, of how 1QA can really be of value to your shop. Streamline the procedures, streamline the process, and free up a bunch of time. In some studies, you know, in working with different hospitals and OEMs, we're showing about a 30% reduction of time uh, per PM. So and then the question always comes up, well, where does that time go? If you look around that biomed shop, you know that huge pile of broken equipment in the corner that we haven't got to? We can reallocate that time into repairing that equipment. Or maybe we can now have time to be on the committee members, on the committees to decide the next equipment that we're going to purchase. There's all different different places we can reallocate that time that we're saving. All right. Hi, folks. This is Dan Wold. I'm I'm on as well, and I'm gonna jump in for Mike here. We did we did get some questions. If you have any questions, do uh, submit them through the uh, the questions portal on Go to Webinar. And um, Justin got a couple questions for you. You know this this all sounds nice, but um, you know, there's there's costs associated to this, and how can I justify this to to my manager? That's a great question, Dan. Um, so, really look at how much your time is worth. You know, you were costing the hospital a salary, right? And where are you allocating that time, and where's it being spent? You know, for a lot of us, still we're doing things like we have a CMS system, but we're still printing off a work order and we're trudging through the hospital with a piece of paper to write down those results and bring it back down to the shop. How much time can you free up with that? You know, back when I was in school and like I first got in the field in like 03, 04, it was like 900 to 1,000 pieces of, a of a equipment per technician. Now we're pushing two to 3,000 pieces of equipment. You know, we're always talking about backlogs and the things we just don't get to. How about we can start freeing up those things? Maybe we can start to put this time into fixing other things in the shops and reducing other pain points for the other staff and other departments. 
So that's that's a big part of the picture. And you know, the rest of the picture is is just making sure we have the safest environment possible. You know, making sure we don't accidentally miss a step, making sure that we don't accidentally record a wrong number. Or here's another one. I've had this happen where I went out and I did PMs. I didn't realize that one of my analyzers hadn't been calibrated. It, it missed the truck. It didn't go out. Here I am. I did a bunch of PMs and it was out of calibration. I had to go back and redo them. All those errors can be reduced with one QA. Perfect. Thank you, Justin. Um, another question. You know, we talked about time savings. Do you do you have any supportive data? You know on what kind of time savings we could get out of 1QA? Sure. You know, working with customers, we're showing on average about a 30% reduction in time. Um, you know, that's some are a little bit more, some are a little bit less. It really depends on the style of work order. But even the most simplistic of work orders, being able to streamline that process, there is a time savings. The more complex the work order, the more time savings the worker. But on average, about 30%. Next one. Thank you, Justin. Uh, got a question about integration with CMMS. A uh, couple, two part question, a list of CMMS partners, uh, and I'll send that link to you. You could visit our website, um, flukebiomedical.com slash 1QA, and we do have a list of CMMS systems that we are already integrated with, but, um, the question, Justin, is can it integrate with any CMMS? I'm not going to say anyone because I'm sure there's going to be an exception, but we haven't found one we cannot integrate with yet. And the list is growing. Please understand that 1QA is a ground up build. This is something we've developed ourselves. It's not another program we bought and repackaged. We're literally building 1QA from the ground up. And as we continue to grow, we're going to continue to integrate with more and more providers. So if you don't see yours on the list today, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We can still start working with you. We can still start recovering some of these time savings for your facility as we work on an integration. And there's no better way of getting your integration and letting us know that you need it. So let us know that you need something and we can start to work towards that. We have a priority list um, uh, for build outs and that's, we can all bring that data back in so we can start giving you the best experience as soon as physically possible. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you don't see what you're looking for on the list. Great. Thank you, Justin. Uh, another question we have is about, you know, how long it will take my shop to get up and running? <laughs> That's a great question. So one of the first customers I sold to was actually a really good uh, uh, client of mine. Um, um, and I'll just name drop them. Uh, the Mount Nittany in uh, uh, State College, Pennsylvania. And those gents, they brought on a new CMMS provider and one QA and were up and running in a few weeks. And they brought it up from scratch, both systems. Uh, so they re-inventoried everything, re-stickered everything and learned the systems. Um, but that's, they decided to take it all in one big bite. The other truth about one QA is you don't have to do it all at once. You know, if you take your top three most monotonous, tedious procedures, Maybe it's IV pumps, maybe it's suction devices. The things you got so many of, it drives you insane. Start with those ones. Like we can start to integrate and build those procedures right off the bat and get that time savings immediately for you and some relief there. And then maybe we look at the top three most litigious. Maybe it's your anesthesia PMs or your defibrillator PMs or your incubator PMs or your, oh Lord, whatever it is that you can think of, give me those top three most litigious and we'll work on those ones next. So now you have the most litigious and you have the most tedious and you start to work towards the middle. Every time you free up more time, that gives us more time to work on getting the next procedure. And you know what? The 1QA team is really happy to help you get this launched out and going. Our procedure library is growing by the day. We can really help work with one in one with this and get you up and running as quick as possible. And that goes from the smallest of facilities to the largest of facilities. We've worked with facilities bringing on 200 licenses at once. We started off, we come up with a plan that fits your specific needs, and we start to work that plan together. And we work right through, so we get it up and running, we get a few master users trained, 
get some procedures built, get them comfortable with it, bring the next team, and on and on and on. And the next thing you know, you're, you're fully integrated and running. Great, thank you, Justin. Um, got another question here about um, in the hospital, their their internet connections. You know, having a system on uh, on a computer and having to connect to the internet is a problem with them. Can you know? Can we use this workflow automation without an internet connection? Oh. Hey, yeah, uh, whoever put that question in, hey, thank you very much, because I completely forgot to mention that earlier. One QA is 100% able to. Yep, we can definitely, you lock out your license. It downloads off the cloud onto your PC. Now, what you can't do in that storm is you can't build new procedures, right, or modify a procedure. But you can go ahead and perform any of those procedures. And then once you're back to a, a data hub or Wi-Fi, synchronize your computer back out, and it all goes right back out, synchronizes with the cloud, your CMMS, and you're right back up and running uh, on the Wi-Fi again. But yep, 100%. You can work in your MIRI vaults. You can work in your off-site locations. Not, not an issue. Not an issue at all. Perfect. Thank you, Justin. And we have a couple other questions about integration with procedures and if they have outside contractors um, that come in and and uh, do some of the procedures, how easy is that to integrate? Um, we may have mm -hmm. to take that one offline. Yeah, we, we may have to take that offline. But you know, a beautiful thing about this is even if you have an outside contractor doing work for you, you can still take that data and copy it and save it into one QA. You know. The, another nice thing about one QA is based off of congruent licenses. So each and every person in your biomed shop has their own unique password and username. It's like your electronic signature. But, you know, we can do things like maybe you, this is a case where you need one that says general contractor A. And that general contractor can then bring that data to the hub. And it's still their electronic procedure if they're following yours, your, your system. We can we can do things like add that. Like I said, one QA is very very customizable. Let us know that need, and if we don't address it today, it's definitely something we can start working on building out. Perfect. Does that Thank help you. you out there? I I think so. Awesome. All right. I just want to remind everyone to to if you have a question, do do send it our way. Um, and these have all been great questions so far, and this is a really cool thing. Um, please check, continue to check back in as one QA continues to grow, and the more capabilities get added to it, the roadmap's changing, uh, more things are getting added to it, and it's just a really exciting time for us. Yeah, I think that's about it, Justin. We have a couple. Well, that's awesome questions about pricing and we'll definitely, you know, we'll get a sales rep up with you to talk about costs associated with, with this software. Sure. Yep. Yep. I can't wait. You know, I'm hoping that everybody takes away some stuff today about how we can help out your systems, how we can work with you. And I really do look forward to hearing from you as we build this out and sitting down and working with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis or working with your team. And I do have one other question here from a participant about the comparison between answer and one QA. <laughs> can, can you speak a little bit to that? Uh, yeah. Let me see here. The, the comparison between answer and one QA. So, you know, the first thing was is answer is based off of that one specific device. You bought a license by device. One QA is, for all of one QA. So you're gaining access to all of our devices and all of the capabilities. Um, you know, another thing is it is really easy to be to build one QA procedures. It's it's really, really easy. Um, I've sat down and built them right at customer sites, right with them. Um, it's easy to drag and drop and you can insert PDFs and JPEGs and format. It's all that stuff is really easy to bring right in and you can customize your, uh, the questions you want and how the answers are going to look. 
all that is really easy to build into it. And it doesn't limit you to just the Fluke devices. The answer was just the Fluke devices. This were we're really opening it up. You can bring in any form of data. It's all it's like a big hub for all those different points we talked about. So it it really is a night and day comparison. Um, and it's you know, it's it's really cutting edge stuff. It's really awesome. Perfect. Thank you, Justin. Well, anything else to add, Justin? I know we have a couple more minutes here, but. Um... Well, I guess if I had to, I just want to thank everybody for the time and joining us today. Um, this is a, a newer product, a newer launch that we're coming out with. It's a really exciting time for us. Um, there's going to be more data and you'll see us a lot more. Please jump back in, poke in, see what's going on. Give us a holler, reach out to your channel partner. We'd love to come out and visit you and really work with your facility, see and learn from you so we can build a solution that meets your needs as the biomed. So again, thank you everybody for your time and I look forward to seeing you on, on the next webinar.